Hi folks, this is Mark by Mark A. Foster, PhD. As you noticed, I did not say for the Institute for Dialectical Metarealism. I could have, but I think it would have been hmm, somewhat odd in this case, because this particular podcast is going to be weird, uh, and I'm letting you know that in advance. This podcast has nothing to do with either critical realism or Maoism, third worldism, nothing at all. Um, it is purely based on two dreams that I had in the last, oh, 24 hours, 36 hours, something like that. Um, tell you basically what happened. I had some really, really weird sleep experiences. First time, I slept for approximately 13 hours. Second time, I got up for about four hours, went back to sleep, slept for about eight or nine hours. In each of those sleep periods, I had somewhat similar dreams. The reason I'm wearing my glasses is because I've written down uh, notes, handwritten notes, that I can barely read, but I can read enough where I can tell you basically what the dreams were. I have always had strange dreams, always had strange dreams when I can recall them. I don't usually recall them, but I do once in a while. And the last 36 hours or so were two examples. And that's the reason why I'm making this podcast is to talk about those dreams. So if that subject does not interest you, you can stop listening. I know my audience is tiny anyway, uh, but I will go ahead and discuss what I had planned to discuss. Okay, both of the dreams had to do with blackouts. I have no idea why I had those dreams. Uh, I'll tell you the first one first. I guess that makes sense. Um, here's what I wrote down here as best I can read it. Again, I wrote this thing in longhand, and my handwriting is absolutely awful. My handwriting has not changed since I was in first grade, um, and it's it was bad then. I used to get horrible penmanship grades, and it's just as, as bad now. In fact, when I've looked at copies of my notebooks from first grade, which I still have, um, my penmanship is basically the same as it was back then. Okay, so again, first dream. Someone came into my home. Well, actually, it was my parents' home back when we lived in the New York, the New York City area. Um, and they tried to um, find out why I was having a problem with lights in my bedroom. Um, there was only one light in my bedroom that would work. The rest of them didn't work. Again, dreams are always odd and so i don't know why i didn't just think of well why don't i trace back that light and figure out where it's coming from and then plug the other lights into the same source or something but i didn't do that so somebody came to fix the problem i guess someone from the power company but i'm not entirely sure about that he tried seemingly for hours um, to fix the problem. He concluded <laughs> that part of the problem was that I had underwear hanging near the glass, near the, uh, the, near the lights. And he said, you can never have your underwear near the lights. Does that make any sense? Of course not. It makes no sense, but that's, that was the dream. Uh, dreams often don't make any sense. Um, at first I continued simply, I considered rather simply buying a new, um, 
floor light, floor lamp, which is what I could not get on. But then I thought, well, maybe I should just try to fix the one that I had. Um, this was a an old floor lamp that I had bought on my own. I don't know when exactly when it was, but um, I don't think I had this floor lamp when I was living in the place that I'm describing. So again, the time the time frame is really not exactly clear. Um, again, um, he kept on going on and on. He ended up asking um, whether my water tasted salty. Now, how water tasting salty would have anything to do with not having lights in my bedroom, how do I know? Uh, it's it it literally it literally makes makes no sense okay now second dream very very similar to the first dream but that's about all i can say it was similar um i could not somehow get my lights on at all and i couldn't figure out why that was um there was a kind of bitter cold and i was at that time still living at my parents home but in this case my parents were involved in the dream my late parents and i said well i think i need new bulbs and um, my my father got me these these thirty five watt bulbs. I guess they're watt. Uh, they're bulb bulbs with that thirty five that's on the box. And uh, the bulbs I already had previously were forty five watt bulbs. And so I was a bit annoyed for some reason <laughs> that he seemed to have gotten me bulbs that were not of as strong power as the previous bulbs were. And for some reason, even though, again, this is kind of a time distortion, I wondered why he had not purchased the newer quality bulbs that last for a really, really long time. Instead, he had bought one of the older quality bulbs that I don't know, basically last maybe a month or two and then burn out. The newer quality bulbs will generally last for a year or more. And I was I was annoyed that he did not get the newer quality bulbs. In any event, um, it did not work. I could not get the bulbs to work. No matter how hard I tried, and let me take my glasses off because that's really all I needed to read from there. No matter how hard I tried, I could not get the bulbs to work properly, meaning there was a blackout still in the bedroom. And again, this was a different dream. But both dreams were about blackouts. So... Where do I go from there? Honestly, I don't know. Um, I don't recall ever having had two back-to-back -back dreams separated by being awake for several hours that both dealt with the same basic subject, namely a blackout in my room. And um, I thought about it. I meditated on it, as I often do with my dreams. I have a specific process I go through to meditate on my, on my dreams, which I actually learned from someone else uh, back when I was, I think, in my teens. And uh, according to this technique, what you do is you write down the dream as soon as you wake up and then you begin 
free associating between the words in the dream, the words that you had written down, and then write down what occurs to you. Then you free associate again on the words that came to me. And then you do it again and again and again and again. The idea behind this kind of free association is that each time you do it, supposedly, again, I have no idea if this has any validity, but supposedly, each time you do it, you get into a deeper layer of the dream. So, yes, I did that a bit. Not as much as I ordinarily do, because I was kind of feeling a bit dazed, I guess, by, by having slept so long. I don't know why I slept that long. Makes no sense to me. I don't think I've ever slept that long before. And the weird thing is, I I slept that long right after I decided to stop taking my sleeping pills, which I had been taking for about four years. I go through cycles where I take the sleeping pills and then I stop taking them and then I'll start again. So this time I had just stopped taking them. The night after I stopped taking them, I couldn't get to bed until 6 a.m. But then I woke up for a few hours and that's when I went to bed for about 13 hours, woke up again for a little while, and then slept for about nine hours. Something like that. Again, it's the whole thing is foggy. And if this thing makes no sense to you, imagine how it feels to me. It makes no sense to me either. But, okay. What came to me as a result of having engaged in this weird kind of uh, free association exercise I did was that we are on the verge of some type of catastrophe. Now, remember what I said. My predictions, my prog prognostications or prophecies, if you want to call them that, are almost always wrong, but not always wrong, almost always wrong, but not always wrong, okay? Important distinction. There have been occasions, in other words, where I have had a dream of something that was going to happen, and it did. For example, I had a dream of 9-11, the night before 9-11, and the dream was almost exactly the same as what happened on 9-11, September 11th, 2001. So I can point to that one case as an example of a dream that actually materialized Okay, now, what came to me when I reflected on this dream that I had in the last several hours or the last day or so, the two dreams, I should say, um, and I'm thinking this through as I'm saying it, so if I sound inconsistent, that's because I'm trying to figure it out as I am talking about it. It's not something that is really easy for me to make sense out of, honestly. It's really confusing to me, even now. Um, when I woke up, I was really, really nervous. Both times I woke up from each of the two dreams that were, bo were both about blackouts in my room. But again, I think that we are about to have some type of, you know, I'm hesitant to say this, but I'll say it anyway. 
some type of major disaster. It may or may not involve electricity. I mean, it could. It could involve a massive power outage all over the world, all over the country, or it could involve some other kind of disaster. The reason why I am making this podcast is because I had two dreams on the same subject. If I had only had one dream, I would have written it down as usual, but I would not be making this podcast. I would have simply made a record of it. What concerns me, and I must say that I'm I'm being honest, my dreams always concern me. I take my dreams very, very seriously. Because I believe that when I dream, without getting into specifics, I am entering into a world that lies between this world and the world after death, meaning between this world and the hereafter. And so I think that I am experiencing something that is meaningful, that somebody who is within that dream world is literally giving me the information in metaphorical form or something like that. So I don't necessarily take the dream as a literal uh, prediction of the future. I don't. Now, have I had dreams that were literal predictions of the future? Again, yes. My dream of 9-11, literally the night before 9-11, when I saw the second plane actually crash into the World Trade Center on TV live when I was sitting on my bed. This is right before I went off to teach at the college. Um, I remember walking into the classroom. I mean, this is what really happened. And my students were sitting there the best way I can describe it is they were sitting there like they were totally stunned. Totally and completely stunned. It's like they were zombies. They had this weird look of what just happened on their face. And I plan to talk about it. To spend the class talking about it. As most of us, most of the professors at the college discovered, that was basically all we could talk about for the next couple of weeks. It put a crimp <laughs> in the semester. But that was not only where I was. That was all over the country and maybe all over the world. So in that case, the dream was literal. Is the dream literal here? I don't know. But I'll tell you this. I do think that the dream is significant. What that significance is, is beyond me. But I do think that there is going to be some type of really, really horrendous disaster in the not-too-distant future. I have no idea what the not-too-distant future is. I don't know. It could mean today. 
It could mean tomorrow. It could mean in the next few years. Although I doubt it will be in the next few years. I think it will be sooner than that. At least based on past experience. And the fact that I had two dreams that were similar to each other. I mean, really similar to each other. Which, to my recollection, never happened before. Now, if it did happen before, it may have been dreams I simply don't rem remember. Usually, I don't recall my dreams. So it's possible that I may have had this before and I just don't know about it. But if I seem spaced out, it's because I really, really feel that way. I feel totally spaced out. This dream or these dreams, these two dreams, really stunned me and um, shocked me. And I would even go as far as saying frightened me. Now, am I frightened now? No. But I was frightened right after I got up each of the two times. I am only feeling a little bit dazed. And I would assume I sound a bit dazed. I can tell if I came across that way when I go back and watch my own podcast, which I always do. Um, but I suspect I probably look dazed as well. That's my impression. I don't know what to make of it. Um, please. This is my request. Do not take what I said that seriously. Take it with a grain of salt. I feel as though I had some obligation, and I don't know why, to tell you about this dream. I am literally trying to make sense out of it as I'm discussing it. But I'm not sure why I felt that obligation. I have no idea. All I can tell you is that the way I'm sounding, the way I think I presumably look, and if I wanted to see how I look, I could glance over to the left and see me on my computer monitor, but I don't want to do that because I'd rather look directly into the webcam, which is to the right of the TV monitor. But I would, while not necessarily taking it seriously, please don't, because it's just me. And I am an extremely fallible person. Am I a mystical person? By disposition, yes. Experientially, not really. I have had a few experiences which I guess could be called mystical. A few but not that many, even though I tend to think about the world and to think about, about my life in a very mystical way. That may be part of the reason why I initially felt so drawn to Roy Baskar. Because Roy was not only a Marxist and a communist, he was also very mystical. Now, I don't agree with many of Roy's mystical ideas. For example, 
Roy believed in reincarnation? I do not. I did believe in reincarnation when I was a kid, but I do not anymore. For a variety of reasons, no reason to, to get into that. That's enough said. I do not believe in reincarnation anymore. As far as I know, Roy believed in it until the end of his life. In one of his books, I would say about half the book was devoted to Roy talking about his past lives. Remember, this is a Marxist and a communist talking about his past lives. So Roy was a rather odd fellow. But then again, whether it's because of my autism or something else, so am I. And I have always been an odd fellow. It's, isn't there an organization called Odd Fellows? I think so. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I'll look it up afterwards. But again, that's really all I can think of to say. But my, my thought is, as I'm speaking, and again, I'm speaking extemporaneously, is to, well, not to take my dream seriously, meaning don't get upset or panic. I don't know why anybody would respond to me that way anyway. But if you are inclined to be a nervous person like me, don't panic. Don't get nervous. Don't even take what I'm saying in entirely seriously. Because I don't. But I still believe, and this is a deeply held conviction, that something devastating, maybe involving power, maybe involving the power grid, okay, maybe involving the power grid or power grids is about to happen. The world, as we all know, is very unstable right now. I was watching a video earlier on Joe Biden and on his increasingly worsening dementia. Donald Trump also has dementia. It does not seem to me to be as bad as Joe Biden's, but he still has it. So for that matter, did Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan, as far as I understand, ended up with Alzheimer's, which can only be determined from an autopsy. So I assume that his body had an autopsy. But here we are in a situation where the two most likely candidates for presidents of the United States this coming November of 2024 are both people with varying degrees of dementia, possibly Alzheimer's, possibly. Whether that has any relationship to this, I don't know. My sense is that whatever I dreamed will happen long before the election in November, but here is one thing that I can say. 
that I feel reasonably confident about. Although I'm nervous about saying it because I don't like making predictions. But I feel like that's precisely what I've been doing. So be it. What I feel reasonably confident about is that this year, 2024, will be the most difficult year in my lifetime. And I will turn 68 on the 27th of this month. This is not going to be, in my humble opinion, a very enjoyable year. It will be a year filled with tremendous pain and sorrow and regret for bad decisions. And we as a species have certainly made many of those. I feel as though I am simply getting repetitive and I, I don't want to do that. I am a very sincere person. I hate lying. When someone lies to me, I despise it. That's not unusual for autistics, by the way, in case you didn't know that. And I'm still like that. So I am I can assure you that I am not making this up. Okay, I'm not fabricating the story. You know, I'm not t telling you a, a fairy tale. This is what happened to me. But do I know that, it, that it's legitimate? Of course not. And just like you, I'm an ordinary person. Maybe nothing that I have said will happen. But again, here's my request. Just occurred to me. Actually, everything I've been saying just occurred to me as I was saying it, except when I was reading from my notes before. I would ask you to please reflect on what I said. And then leave me a comment below the video on what your thoughts are. And I'm asking this not just to stimulate conversation, which is why I ordinarily ask it. I'm asking it because I feel like I need to receive some sort of, not confirmation, but just some kind of reaction to what I said, what you think about what I said. If you have had any dreams or experiences which in any way parallel the stories that I told you. For now, this is Mark by Mark A. Foster, PhD. Have a pleasant day and an even better day tomorrow.